children who are subjected to sexual abuse, when they grow up, they will either they will join terror gangs or they create terror gangs. Currently, I'm the County Minister for Trade, Tourism, Investment and Industrialization in my county, Embo County. Wow. And before uh, that, okay, before I took over the docket of uh, Trade and Tourism, I was the County Minister for Health for wow. my county. I've also run the dockets of uh, Education, and my first um, assignment was as a county minister for gender, children, mm. culture, and social services. Something for which I really thank my governor, His Excellency Martin Nyaga Wambora, who is also the chair for the Council of Governors. Well. In the course of my work, I've talked about the research I did. My research yeah. uh, titled The Crisis of Child Sexual Abuse of uh, uh, um, by teachers in Kenya, a case of Makueni County. Through that research, I discovered that many teachers did not even understand the law as far as child protection is concerned. Many teachers are ignorant of the provisions of Article 53. They are ignorant of the provisions of the Children Act and the Sexual Offenses Act. And so, uh, having seen that there was a lot of abuse in schools, going by the data and the uh, propositions of some of the community members in Makueni, I realized that we needed to do something more radical, having an army, building an army within the schools, but an army that would be indomitable in the sense, if it is happening where you are, you don't need a lot of effort, you don't need extra resources to deal, deal with it initially. You can stop a fellow teacher from abusing a child by just saying stop it. If a teacher knows that uh, somebody is likely to tell on them for doing certain things, they will stop, they'll be cautious, they'll be careful how they treat children. And that was the essence of establishing Beacon Teachers. And what we did, you know, initially, of course, people were a bit apprehensive, people were skeptical about what can the teacher do. The teacher is only, you know, there to teach. But one of my missions was to, to convince teachers that you cannot effectively teach if the children are not well protected. I always give my example. Up to this day, I give teachers my example. If at the age of four and a half, <laughs> I, was, um, I had the mind to deal with a teacher, what about a 16-year-old? At that moment when I was thinking to ride backwards, if I was 16, 17, what do you think I could have done, maybe? How safe is a teacher who is dealing badly with children, thinking that you're dealing with a child, but this person is, some of the, the students, by the way, today, some of the students are even bigger than the teachers who are teaching them. But then at the same time, because my interest has always been to make sure we have effective service to the kid, to the child, to the student. How can we be more effective as teachers for less sweat? You know, because, okay, <laughs> what I didn't tell you is when I started teaching, I used to beat kids also. Because I got into the teaching profession and I found the culture, I was inducted into a culture of beating. But believe you me, I did not go beyond two months. It was too much. And then I started evaluating my success rate. And I realized I was gaining nothing because I beat them and the next day I went to class and I felt embarrassed. I don't know what was wrong. I felt embarrassed. Even when I asked them, uh, I tried to teach them, I felt like, there was a disconnect. Yeah. And so from my first year of teaching, I decided I was going to use a different approach. And when I started to negotiate with students, some of the statements I used were like, what did you gain from that? How do you feel about what you have just done? Okay, you haven't completed your homework. Mm. 
how do you feel that you haven't completed your homework and that is what we are going through, what we are reviewing now in this class? What value will it add if I send you out? What value will it add if I beat you? What value will it add if I submit your name to the principal mm. to be sent away? And somehow my students began to open up to discussing, discipline, to negotiating, to agreeing. So I got to a point where it was the students themselves who were telling one another, no. If you do this in this class, we're going to do this and this and this with you. They began to deal with their own discipline. Mm. So I was, I was gaining momentum towards positive discipline. But uh, coming fast forward to, to the Beacon teachers, when we did the Ending Violence Against Children uh, project with uh, Plan International and those other um, partners, that component of Beacon teachers I made sure part of it was to train the teachers on the necessary or the requisite legislation. The Sexual Offences Act, the Children Act, the, um, the Basic Education Act, the TSC Act, the Code of Regulations. We infused all that, but then I also put in a component of, I don't want to say building passion, but helping the teacher understand the value of building a strong student, a strong child. Mm. The value they gain by being nice to the child. The value they gain by getting support from the student. Because many teachers don't understand that they need the support of the st student to succeed. It's like being a leader and all, the, all your followers are shouting against you and you think you're leading. So if I'm a teacher and I'm abusing children and I'm teaching them, already their minds are disconnected. And for me, it comes from my experience. Because if right in early childhood, I could not learn anything because I got disconnected. How about somebody in class six, class five, class eight, form one, form three? How much can that be? So we built that and I began to, I, I always looking back, I say I began to impart passion. Hmm. And to tell teachers they are investors in children because that is what they are. If you are an investor in a venture, you try to do everything possible to make sure that the venture does not collapse. And so all the teachers that I got into contact with in 2014, and I thank God for also my team members in, in the TSA head office, uh, Kina Kenneth Marango, uh, Zipora Supuk, and a few others, Kina Lili, uh, Oriema, you know. We helped to begin a movement of teachers that would say no to abusing children and that would also stand up for the child, that would recognize the value of investing positivity in the child. From the psychology that I have read and my experience with children, if they feel good, they learn faster. If they feel good, if their self-esteem is high, they learn faster. And what you give them is what they give you back. The other day we had an experiment with my Beacon teachers. I said to them, tomorrow when you go to class, stand in front and don't say the usual good morning just stand there and smile and give me back the results at the end of the day. The teacher said, just by standing in front of kids and smiling, it's like everything, the atmosphere changed. And the kids started smiling back and they started laughing and they were like, teacher was funny. Teacher, why are you laughing? And everybody was smiling. Now the class yeah. was warm. And from that day, their classes have felt nice. One of our teachers in a school called Goo Secondary, a teacher called Caroline, <laughs> this is what she said after that experience. That, that day felt totally different from how classes felt all the years she has been teaching. Wow. And from that day, she never stopped smiling. She goes to class and the kids go, Teacher, what's wrong? What's funny? And they all laughing. Then they begin the class. 
And when the class begins like that, you know, it's very difficult to shift quickly from a smile to a frown. Mm. Yeah? So when you have already warmed up the class, everything feels good. She says that many of her students have started even speaking in class. They were not talking. She wow. says her health has improved. She feels wow. better. Her relationship with the other teachers has even improved. Before, some of our colleagues have, have testified that they knew her as one of the worst teachers. Bad-hearted, quick-tempered. The students used to keep quiet because you don't want to ignite that fire, you know? Mm. <laughs> you don't want to ignite the fire. So when she asks questions, you just, because you may start answering, you have the wrong answer, and then she sparks. She says she does not know. Something has changed ever since she joined Beacon Teachers. Mm. And from that day of the smile experience, uh, experiment, the children, in fact, one of the teachers in, 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 um, in Kitui said, the kids started, you know, teacher, can we show you our smile? And you see they're wearing wow. masks, eh? Teacher, please allow us to show you our smile. It feels very nice. So Beacon Teachers. Mm. One of the things we have, other things we have been able to do is to demonstrate to fellow teachers, to other teachers, that it is possible to teach children without molesting them, without beating them. You know Kenyan schools, they are about beating. Much as the corporal punishment was outlawed, eh? Chini amaji. Watoto wana chapwa kichapo chambwa. Chini ama? Chini amaji. Chini amaji. But teachers have begun to re recognize the fact that they can now teach without beating a kid and kids can be responsive kids can be compliant to school rules without being beaten the beacon teachers wherever they are and we have beacon teachers in every county in this country they have demonstrated that peace and goodness to children it pays results in many of those schools have improved one of our schools in Kuala County, a school called Kinango Primary, when they introduced the positive discipline approaches, the Beacon teachers in that school said they were going to make, um, they were, they were going to make school child friendly. And they agreed not to do any form of uh, beating or the kind of punishments they were beating, they, they were giving before. And from that, that school shot from one of the lowest performing to one of the best in the county. In 2020 results, Kinango Primary School had the best girl and the best boy in the county from the bottom. If you go to that school, life feels so sweet. You know you walk in and you feel like something nice is happening. And this is what we have failed to do in our schools. When kids know that something nice will happen, they will come to school. We won't even have to do all these rules about don't come to school late, or don't fail to come to school. You won't have to do that. Mm. There will be something that will draw them to school. I was, I, I was, I was told a story of one of the children in Kilifi. This boy was so sick. So he was collected from school and taken to hospital. Now the teacher expected, after being treated, the kid would go home. Shock on the teacher. In the afternoon, the boy was back to school. And the teacher was like, why did you come? Our teacher didn't want to miss class. Then another teacher in the same county, I think she was unwell, she missed, a, she missed de, de, uh, a day in school. And the next day when she came, all the kids were like, yay, teacher is around, teacher is around. That is how nice it feels. So if we can fix the issue of protecting children, just making them feel good in their space, mm. supporting them. Our beacon teachers, when a child has an issue, has a problem, they support that child. They are able to support. This Wangoi is not always like this. Something must be wrong. Guess what? Children are now coming to school and telling teachers, my father usually abuses me. My father abused me yesterday in one of the schools in Embu. The child came to school in the morning and told the teacher, I live with somebody who my father took me to. This person apparently is, is, is supposed to be a religious leader. And the girl said, he has been abusing me. 
Even last night he abused me. Can you imagine? So children are bringing their issues and when they table those issues, the beacon teachers, they take them up. We did the, the pilot between 20, 2014 and 2016 with the Teacher Service Commission. I worked there then before I left for, for Equity Bank. But then the rest is history in between that in 2019, we registered that officially or formally as a, an ungovernmental organization. Mm. And this Beacon Teachers Africa, a Pan-African organization, it works with teachers who volunteer. It is about building the courage, building the passion in teachers. By the way, our mantra is Beacon Teachers Africa where passion powers action. Um, I will tell you, our schools are not safe Many of them, not all of them probably, but many of them are not safe. Let's take, for instance, the issue of corporal punishment. I was being told by one of the parents the other day how the teacher beat a boy, a class 8 boy who was beaten until blood, you know, gushed out of his mouth and his nose. A single strike with a cane across the back. How does that feel? If your child came home and said something like that happened, would you still take him to school the next day? Would you not rather have a full child who is illiterate than have a child with an A who is maimed? What do you think is going to happen to that child with that degree of, 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 of violence? What will make that child not be violent in the future? What will make that child have any empathy for anyone? Because from psychology, People who are subjected to so much pain as children, they will work to give society as much pain. And when I did my child abuse studies, one of the things that I learned was that um, children who are subjected to sexual abuse, when they grow up, they will either they will join terror gangs or they create terror gangs. Some of the things that we're seeing in this country and in the world generally, they could be fruits of abuse of children. An abused child grows up knowing there's no one to look after me in this life and I need to pay back. I need to punish somebody for what I was subjected to. And it doesn't matter what unto us as adults eh, that we think that we're fine, like you think because your child is in a good school and everything is okay, that you're safe. The child from the other school where they are being abused, one day will be your problem. And that is why I always encourage people, and I'm challenging Kenyans and the world in general, to do something to protect children. Because an abused child, all this terrorism we are suffering, you never know. You never know. Probably many of those cases can be traced to a bad childhood, mm. abusing, ab abused child in their, uh, uh, their childhood, they form terror gangs, they seek to punish society, and they will punish. Remember, I keep saying violence begets violence. I was watching a video the other day of a little kid, that kid must be like, less than, maybe about two. You probably watched that video, where the kid is agitating against the father, and whatever the father yeah, says, yeah. the kid says it. You yes. insult the kid, the kid insults back. You punch, you try to... The kid wants to punch you. Mm. That is exactly what's happening to society. And if people understand, it doesn't matter how much you have protected your child. You think because you have uh, resources to take somebody to court and so they are keeping away from abusing your child, that you are safe. Even your child will not be safe. Because all these gangs that we are creating, where will they live? Where shall we be when they arise? And so, for us at Beacon Teachers Africa, one of, we, we have determined, we have determined in our spirits that we are going to fight to the last tooth. We are going to fight to the bitter end because I would rather be calling out to God and saying, save me, I saved somebody's child than be thinking that I can create safe space for myself. There will never be safe space for an individual if everybody else mm -hmm. is unsafe. If, you're not, if your child is safe and every other person's child is not safe, think twice. 
parents, many of them have given up. They're not paying attention to looking after children. They think when they have given them food, that is it. But also, they are not paying attention to those things that build the software of the child. Because nurturing, nurturing good, good children must start from the beginning, from the base. But again, I've had this talk in Kenya about you teach and go. Teach and go. Don't bother with those other things. Teach and go. Who are you teaching? As you're preaching the message of teaching and going, you're going, where are you going? Teach and go where? That kid is growing up. The kid who is in class one now, a few years ago will be finishing primary, I mean a few years to come, will be finishing primary. Those that you're dealing with so ruthlessly in class eight because you want them to give you A's. Okay, they might end up giving you the A's, but what next after that, what? You've seen the kind of cases of violence mm. in, our, uh, in our secondary schools. You've seen for the first time kids beating teachers, literally. We had a case in Samburu where primary school boys beat teachers. That was on the news. Beating. Kneel down, we beat you. Cane you. So if primary school kids can cane a teacher, the only solution I see is for the adults in this country and in the world to recognize the danger of failing to protect children and to agree to build a good system for protecting children right from the home. Some of the parents are suffering because they don't have the know-how to nurture discipline. They don't understand how to parent. And you understand because when you become a parent, the, the parenting doesn't come with a manual. You don't become a mother, then a manual drops for you to open and start reading. But there must be a way of getting these parents, and I, and I really want, want to challenge the minister of, uh, in charge of social protection, you know. While we are protecting the very old by giving them whatever support we are giving them, this young parent who is 14, who is 9, and going back to school, and we have so many of them. In fact, one of the surveys that was done in 2018, it showed there were so many parents, almost more than 40% parents, who have children in class 8, who's, um, you know, who got, got those children when they were between the age of 9 and 14. So if my child is in class 8 and I am 20, Four, for instance, at class eight, kids are above 14, isn't it? 14, 15. So if I'm 24 and I have a class eight, how old was I when I got that child? Now these parents are incapacitated in a way. They are not able to discuss, to have the kind of discussions that parents would have with, the, with their children. They don't have the courage. I remember one, I think one parent that was in Kilifi or where. Mm. <laughs> The teacher said they came, they came to discuss discipline. He summoned the parent to come and talk about the child's discipline because the girl was beginning to, to move around with boys. And the girl as a mother, Harry Mimi, you know, she said Harry Mimi, meaning I'm better off. Well, Liniza, how old were you when you got me? You were in class four, you dropped out in class four. I'm in class eight, Harry Mimi. Am I not better off? So what moral authority do you have to speak to me about discipline when you got a baby in class four? At least I'm in class eight, Harry Mimi. So helping one another to bring up children. Today's society, even if you find somebody else's child misbehaving, you don't bother. You don't want to be bothered. You find somebody else's child going the wrong route, you don't want to be bothered because we have become so individualistic. But we must recognize that this society is for all. It's a collective responsibility to bring up children. And the school cannot do this alone. We need the concerted efforts of the parents and everyone. And that's why I challenge also all the organizations that are dealing in child protection to take a different look at things. We have been doing the same thing all the time expecting different results. Those results are not happening. Kids are getting worse. Kids are getting destroyed in between. What can we do? I vouch for support for, children, for parents. To learn how to parent. At that early age, I was looking at that video again, watching that video where the kid is really fighting back. 
and the kid is about two years. What do you expect when that child is 10 and 12 and 17? What do you expect? Positive discipline skills are very, very critical at this time because the structure of society also is such that people no longer go to one another's homes liberally, even down in the community, you know, in the villages. They no longer visit the way they used to do. They no longer pay attention the way they used to do. And today's parent has also become very interesting. We are so, so selfish that you think if somebody cor cor uh, corrects your child, that they are mocking you, mm. that they are saying you're not capable. We must get to a point where we recognize that we have collective responsibility to bring up children and that we have to nurture them to be the kind of adults, the kind of human beings we want to see in society. Beacon teachers have done their bit and they are doing every day. One of the, the, the other things that they do, we, we do is uh, to get community members and to speak to them about protection of children. We've also been very forthright about saying no. If we find an abuser, we deal with them. We take necessary action. We mobilize the rest of the agencies that are responsible for child protection. So we have very many cases that we have um, supported to go to court. We have many cases we have supported even to, to uh, we have rescued. And 2021 has been interesting. We've taken back so many kids to school, so many. Everywhere a beacon teacher finds a child not in school, during school hours, they take it upon themselves. I remember one of them um, recently, just about a week ago, she met kids on the way. They were going home, they had been sent home for fees, mm. for some levy. She took all of them back to school. And she told that teacher, that particular head teacher, you can't do this, it's against the law. Yeah. Kids should be in school. Malimu, do you know you can actually be put to task for doing that? Call their parents and ask them to pay the money you're asking for, but never send a child home. You know, the head teacher, this teacher said she was surprised that the teacher didn't seem aware. Wow. The head teacher did not seem to know that she was breaching some law. And because of her action, those kids were able to go back to class mm. and that particular head teacher learned never to send kids home. One of our beacon teachers in Mombasa, she found a street family and she collected all those five children and she called out to the beacon teachers and she said, I have five kids I must take to school tomorrow morning. And guess what? That night, the beacons put together enough money to buy all the uniform and books for those kids and the next day they were in school. This is a beacon called Jemima. Wow. Yes. So we have lots and lots of stories um, of good things that are happening. And my clarion call to not just uh, the beacon teachers, but to every teacher in this country and across Africa, because this story is not just for Kenya, it is for Africa. Mm. I would like to encourage our teachers to recognize the value in investing in children, when you're in, an investor in a venture, I'll say again, you make sure that that venture succeeds. Children who feel good in school, even though they might not perform, even though they might not give you a grade A that you think you will use to, to, uh, to bargain for your promotion, you have invested big into the future.